This episode is sponsored by Racial Prejudice. In this video, I'd like to tell you guys a story about something that happened at work as to set an example of what we're aiming to get at here. Um, in order to make sense of this story for you guys, we're going to have to go a little ways back and provide kind of a, a backstory to the story we're intending to tell. During the protests, the George Floyd protests, uh, generally speaking, racism protests here in America, um, most recent of late, um, we, we talked about it a lot at work. There's uh, I'm not sure what the, the like what the percentages would be, and uh, I mean percentages. I, I'm not sure what I could say the calculations are on, on what races and or ethnicities are um, working in that facility, but I can say that it is overwhelmingly a, it is an overwhelmingly black population. There are few, very few whites, and then there are other ethnicities that, I, again, I can't be sure of. I know that our administrator, I believe, is Indian, um, and we haven't had a new guy we come in recently that I've been training who is Indian, and he's been teaching me his language, which I can't recall what he said the language was actually named or called. Um, languages are called, people are named. People are named, just in a tangent. People are named. Things, objects, places, instances, they're called. People are not called. For those of you who use that term in that way, please stop doing that. That's aggravating beyond description. People are named. People are not called. That's fucking offensive. A per she is called Tracy. What have you, Tracy? Tracy's an asshole. Never mind. Tracy is an asshole. Though. Keep that in mind, especially if she's watching. Tracy, you're a fucking asshole. And she's 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 a badass though, Tracy. She's a spotter. She's a master spotter. She's just renegade. She uses it for really manipulative, evil, evil, evil plays. Bad guy. Bad. Anyways. Um, during the protest, we talked a lot, uh, a lot about it at work, um, particularly politics, but obviously the instances as they occurred. Now, at one point, there was uh, an older white man, I'm sure a lot of you might have seen this if you're paying attention, and for the love of God, I hope you're fucking paying attention, man. If you guys are still ignoring what's happening in the world, like, I know a lot of you came in from the metaphysics slash spiritual arena, and you kind of, not not to mock you, but you tend to live in something of a fantasy world where it's just all about the elder traditions and their ideologies and mythologies and such, and the, the world as it stands can be damned because of its corruption. That's the wrong way to do things. That's the wrong thing to do. We were provided these mythologies. We were provided this education by the elder traditions in order to make use of it, in order to maintain our standing. The political arena is where we make use of what education we've been provided in the spiritual arena. That's the point of it all. There's a, a, a life for training and there's a life for practice. We need to be moving into the practical area wherein we are actually affecting the world rather than just talking about whatever. I know that you, a lot of you have this passivity idea to be passive about everything, to be pacifist, because a lot of the elder traditions will have given you that, um, will have, you know, insisted that, but they insisted that <laughs> under the premise that they probably presumed we would have gone by now beyond the, the place that we are at, which is actually behind the place that we were when they made these, these scriptures and whatnot, um, even before religion, uh, they were quite a ways ahead of us that we devolved in many ways. In many ways we've evolved, the technology has advanced, that's a good thing, it's all good, 
we've been on point for the most part, but we are terribly late right now. We're running way behind, and I'm not going to bullshit you. We're in very serious trouble right now. So we need to pick up the fucking pace, and I'm going to try and help you with that here as best I can. It, now, please note, anybody who's watching who's already, like, feeling as though they want to click off, this is a very important video. This is just going to show you something I know you're not seeing. I know, because I can see you. See, I can see you. I know what you're doing, and I know what you're not doing. And one thing that you're not doing is catching this. No. Anyways, back to the story. Uh, there was uh, a, a white guy, an older white guy, who got uh, pushed by a police officer during one of the riots. Uh, he's a real... I don't know if he's real. He, he appeared to be a real old white guy with white hair, beard, and all that shit. And uh, I know, I know, I've got to fuck off. Man. I'm not that old. God, technically, I'm, I'm old. I'm old as fuck, man. They probably wouldn't let me in the club if they knew how old I am, but technically, I'm still in my 30s. So kiss my ass. Crazy. Anyways. Real old white guy, super old, like old as fucking dirt. This dude, he he's stepping up to the police, right? He's standing in his ground, and the cops they they push him down and crack his fucking head open, and he's bleeding on the sidewalk, and they're watching him. And like, still, we haven't done much of anything about any of this. They murder black people left and right, and they damn near murdered this white guy. I don't know what happened to him, but the thing is that I was talking to this girl. And I'm going to go ahead and name her because for reasons I shall not reveal just yet, I don't have to give a fuck anymore. Uh, Carolyn is this girl that I was working with. And she's a black girl, mother, um, fantastic young lady. I really loved her, like, a lot. Like, I felt as though she and I were developing a friendly connection. But as we'll get into in later videos, you're not, it seems you're not really allowed to do that in the working environment which is a real big problem and it's the source of many other problems we're going to have to deal with coming up shortly in cycle two but uh i spoke to her about it and i tried to explain to her that you know as regards police and their training they're provided not merely reasoning and justification but even incentive to be afraid of black people particularly young virulent I don't know if you're the right word to use here. Um, young, vital black men. You know, black men who are strong and, and who do indeed pose a threat in, in a physicality, in, as regards physicality. Black men who could be dangerous should you get into a fight with them. And they have, you know, they, they have every reason to believe that young black men are going to fight back and power to them in that regard because, I mean, they do have that reason being that police will fucking shoot them. <laughs> like I said, we see we seen a cop, I'll try to put a clip here, we seen a cop shoot a black man in the driver's seat of his car next to his wife in front of his children because he told the police officer that there was a gun in the in the like he did everything that he was supposed to do as an American citizen in that situation and the cop freaked out and shot him and this is because of the police training. This is because the police are indoctrinated by cultism, which comes back to religion. But we didn't want to get into that, the particularities of that event later. But I mean, obviously that provides, I think, a particularly reasonable justification for black men to want to fight back against police should they be put in such situations. They have every right to, and they should. In fact, it's written in our constitution that that is what they should be doing. But the police, they're having none of it because they've been trained to be afraid and to treat every fucking buddy they come across as a potential threat. And indeed, in many cases, as a present danger. So, um, yeah, they have every reason in their minds, from their perspective, to be afraid of black men. But they're not provided so much of this reasoning to be afraid of white men, young white men, let alone elderly white men who appear uh, frail enough to fall over at any moment. You know, like, the fact that this guy was standing up against the police at all was, was admirable. A. B. Astonishing. 
<clears throat> but um, I told you this. I was like, the, the police have reason to be afraid of, of black men. That's understandable if you look at it from their perspective. Now, this was a mistake on my part saying this, obviously, for anybody who is a spotter and, and has, you know, kept along with what we've been providing you, you should know, notice the, uh, the values there are not compatible with the, <laughs> with the uh, circumstances. And, and I didn't notice it because she didn't, I mean, she, there, I, I could read her body language that she had taken this the wrong way, but I didn't make much of it at the time. Now, cut ahead to much later on, months later, uh, she and I are working the line together, the uh, dish line, in the back end of the kitchen. And um, I really liked this girl, um, I, I felt like we were friendly, and so I opened up to her while we were working the line. I had seen at that time a lot of uh, these, these, I guess, jokes on Facebook, um, just glimpsing different profiles on Facebook concerning black women's hair and don't get black women's hair wet and I know this is actually it turns out to be something of a common trope uh, which we'll get to towards the end of this video but I didn't understand it I still don't really understand it because nobody will answer my fucking question but I asked her about it I, I was like I don't get this joke like why why do so many people say don't get a black woman's hair wet I mean, I can understand if you like mess up her hairdo or something, but it's like, why is this a particularity as a black woman? And she turned around and just lost her shit because she had been waiting up to this point, which I had not realized she had been waiting for any reason to jump on this. That value had been set in play in her mind. She had been waiting for me to say something that she could construe as being in some way racist or offensive in that regard and she blew up and she accused me of being racist for asking this question saying that the question itself is racist which is like not even really possible that's not possible there are very few things as regards the use of language that can be inherently racist that's really improbable we'll say heavily improbable but um Obviously, this was not. This was a white man reaching out to a black woman in an attempt to make an exchange of information for the better understanding of each other. This is the opposite of racism. This is called communication. But she went around and she proceeded to go to every black person, which again is most of them in our crew and informed them that I was racist and that I was being racist and offensive to her. And some of them kind of blew it off and said, I don't get it, that doesn't make sense, because it doesn't. But some of them took it to heart, including my boss, who just, obviously, she feels as though there's a certain set of politics in the working environment that she needs to adhere to. And so she has to kind of take this seriously in that regard and treat it as though I'm in the wrong inherently and I'll grant her that that's not that's not an issue but she kind of took it a little too far and she had like everybody gather around and come down on me for this and even go so far as to say well if we were to mention this to, to HR right now to human resources right now you'd be fired you know for it which it, that could very well be the case because we, as we discussed in, in a prior video, my human resources lady is not altogether there, um, so to speak. She's a little inept, but I do love her. I, I love everybody at that facility, everybody. And there's a couple people. We'll get to them later, but there, there's one person particularly who's just a fucking scam artist and a piece of shit. And then there's another person who is just like loads. I, I can't say that they're they're like a bad person in their own right, but as regards our relationship, I cannot work with this person. And thankfully, she's gone because she didn't want to work with me uh, for reasons that are perfectly understandable. I stood up to her bullshit, and I wouldn't let her essentially threaten other people on my crew or myself. And she got mad about that. She got mad because I was, you know, generally speaking, enforcing the policies of the facility upon her. And she quit because of it. So, 
thank God for that. That was awesome. I could not stand to be with that person another moment. But of course, I would have to. The story will continue later. I, I should like to make note here that um, I, I want to express gratitude to the facility for actually working to protect us in these times. Uh, they went out of their way to give us like certifications or rather certificates and whatnot for public transport and, and to avoid being detained by the police should we come across the right because the protests were taking place nearby and uh, a lot of us had to go through the protest to get to work and so and obviously the, the establishment was under the impression that these protests were in fact actually riots which did not happen. That's not real. That never took place. None of these protests were riots, at least in this area. Uh, some of them got a little violent, so to speak, but that was on behalf of the police attacking civilians, A, and B. You know, some, some property was destroyed, but that's like, that's stuff. That's not people. So, I mean, that's kind of how we're supposed to be conducting such protests when you have a reason to be, and we do indeed, we did then and we do more so now, have a reason to be posing a violent expression to the establishment. Vi now, obviously, some of these protests did indeed devolve into riots, but I should like to note that that was a rarity. Uh, very few of these instances actually occurred, relatively speaking. Of course, it would happen to be the case that the media would focus upon those events and kind of leave out the grand sum of others that were perfectly peaceful, and especially those that were perfectly peaceful, many of such that were perfectly peaceful, but indeed devolved into riots because the police attacked civilians without cause within moments of having been informed of these events the initiative issued uh, statements to the effect of advising against and indeed warnings against conducting in such behaviors uh, we in no way condone and indeed condemn uh, rioting and looting especially where it comes to the damaging of properties for the sake of stealing um, I mean th this is just this is setting us back this this idea that we're going to hold peaceful protests the police are going to attack us and then you're going to go ahead and start looting stores and such and and burning civilian vehicles and whatnot uh for the sake of of self-gain and providing further reasoning for the police to get hostile whereas where I speak to the use of violence on our part in this context, what I am meaning to say is hostility, essentially. This would be what indeed is called for as peaceful protests aren't getting the job done, and if the police or the ipso de facto government happens to disagree with our peaceful protesting, they can indeed go ahead and treat us with hostility and violence and, and hurt, if not kill, many of our people and just fucking get away with it, as is usually the case. Where I say that violence is necessary in some on some occasions, I'm meaning to say hostility vaguely. I'm not meaning to call for violence against any other people, unless of course it's in defense of yourself or others. I just, I feel like I look around and I see most people feeling resigned feeling apathetic even, just saying, well, this is just the world, this is just the way things work, but that's not the case, and these are not the appropriate responses. Anger is the appropriate response here, not resignation, and hostility is the appropriate expression of that anger. We have every right to be protesting, and we have every right to be damaging government property if that's what's needed in order to get the ear of those who can make the decisions we need made. As unfortunate as it indeed actually is, we no longer have time to play it safe. We need to move fast and hard. Violence is what is needed. Again, this idea of being perfectly pacifist. The people that are pushing this idea upon you in the spiritual arena, in the metaphysical arena, you guys, 
people that are telling you that you need to sit back, be perfectly pacifist, just think happy thoughts and let it all slide, are the people who are at the same time stabbing you in the fucking back. Okay? Yes, the elder tradition suggested pacifism, but only in the event that peace had been achieved. We are not living in a peaceful time. And the people that are the people that are in control of our government, the establishment as it stands, are not on our side. None of them. Some of them could be. Actually, you know, there's a few people coming up in the Democratic Party who are in fact on our side fully. But if you've been paying attention, you notice that they've been swayed of late. They've been scared off of stepping up and standing their ground while certain persons, such as our current president, could be. They could be swayed if we can manage to provide the incentive for that. If we can manage to provide the support and the pressure that's needed to change their mind on the matter and to back up these others coming up, such as AOC and her crew. These people need our support. And they need they, they need our support, man. You cannot sit back and think happy thoughts. I'm sorry to say, but yes, sometimes violence is the answer. And please note, where I say violence, I mean I mean the, the alteration of conditions by means of force. That doesn't mean hurting people. It means being for lack of a better term, hostile. It, you know, in the court system, we have this term hostile as regards like you can treat somebody as a hostile witness in, in the justice system, in the legal system. This is, this does not mean hurting people. We still have protocol. Do not harm. Do not lie. Do not divide. Unless it's to protect yourself or others. And we do need to be protecting ourselves or others. People, your lives are in danger right now. I know you don't see it because it's a few moves down the line, but it's happening. There's a person with the blade of a knife pressed up against your back right now, just uh, speaking metaphorically, you can say. And, and they're whispering in your ear, just be a pacifist, just be passive, just settle down, be calm, let it happen. No, we can't afford to do that. Our planet, our home, our future, our species is at risk. So yes, in certain cases, violence, as the word was intended to be used, is the answer. And such is the case as it stands right now. In any case, <clears throat> as regards this story, I had my whole crew like coming down on me for this and looking down on me and treating me as though I had in fact actually been racist and I, I broke down. Um, this, uh, there's another sort of version of me you could say that's at work that isn't... I, I, I don't want to impress myself as being a director there. I'm there to take orders, I'm there to take care of business, I'm there to be a laborer, a worker. I, I work under my boss and I am loyal and dedicated to serving the interests of the facility in that in that regard. That's kind of a going to work is sort of a, a vacation from my actual work, you could say. It's it's a place where I don't have to be the person in charge and I do not want to be. And I, I really don't want to have to step up and do that at any given point. I will influence the people in play. If, if need be, in such a way as to benefit us or to um, relieve stresses or to take care of certain problem areas, but I'll do that covertly. I do not want to be treated as though I'm a person who is taking up any further responsibilities that I'm given, generally speaking, in the role that I'm playing there. Because I, I, I have to take all of the responsibilities elsewhere, you know, so it's relieving to me. That's that's a that's a reprieve going to work. So I'm I you say I'm sensitive. You could say I'm not as as virulent. I'm not as you know strong-willed there, and it really hurt me. And I did break down. I even I cried about it. I mean I literally cried about it because it's like I'm looking around and I'm seeing people fucking hallucinating around me. I'm seeing people not only mistaking the situation based on misinformation from this young lady that I really care about, who obviously 
cared more about attacking me than she did befriending me. Because, in fact, and I, I, I'm not sure I should need to point this out just yet, she is racist. For the sake of maintaining perfect clarity here, in an attempt to explain her, to my boss her position on this instance being offensive to her personally and racist on my part, asked me the question, Well, Blue, how would you feel if I asked you why white people smell like dogs when they get wet? Which, of course, is obviously not necessarily to be considered sort of a blue checkmark sentiment. I've never heard this before, and I'm going to go ahead and bet that most of you haven't either. Um, but nonetheless, my boss went ahead and let it slide whilst continuing to reprimand me for having asked the initial question. I do think it should be worth noting that my boss is black as well. Tisk tisk. So to sum up the exchange, in response to me having asked her a question that is in no way whatsoever offensive, and certainly not to any extent racist, in fact quite the opposite of such, she went about positing a query to me that was very much so intentionally offensive, exceptionally racist, and quite frankly, a fucking stupid question that she pulled out of her fucking stupid asshole. So, I mean, to be quite clear about it, this quote-unquote fine young lady is indeed a deeply racist asshole, and she doesn't even know it. You know, just for, like, educational purposes, I guess. If you look around, and every injustice that you see seems to you to be racially motivated, and if, you know, just in your daily life, most every instance you happen to come across seems to come across to you as being, in some way or another, racial prejudice, you just might be a racist. And if you don't get that, I'm going to explain it right here. Now, the value put in play as regards the white guy and, and being attacked by the police and me saying that police have a reason in their mind to be afraid of black men, obviously she's going to take that ball and run with it in, in her mind as being me saying that police do have a real justification to be afraid of black men and thereby have a justification to be murdering black men. That's what she's going to be thinking because that's what she wants to be thinking because that's what she's been conditioned to think because she has been, you could say, infected or corrupted by racism, by actual systemic racism. Not as regards the legality or the laws in play or the way that we, we treat laws and handle things. This is actual systemic racism in the sense that it's in your operating system. That it's sneaking around, hidden into the foundation of the way you think about things. It's acting there behind the scenes where you can't see it. Causing for you, for a lot of people, not necessarily you in general. I'm sure you are just fucking perfect, but... Most people, and particularly black people, this is a trick that's been played on them and they don't see it. Black people don't see this. That there is in fact nobody here in this day and age that was in any way directly involved or responsible for slavery. And most of us are wholeheartedly against it and, and despise it. And a lot of us have been pushed to feel bad about it as though we are responsible in some way. And, and I mean, in some ways we are, as regards with the concept of reincarnation, we'll get into that later. But um, th there is a certain degree of responsibility that sh we should accept, because indeed, in many ways, we are those people, metaphysically speaking. But people can change, and we have. For the most part, the majority of white people are again, and yes, the ma majority. The white supremacists, they're a minority. It's just that the extremists are the ones that they pay most attention to. Uh, Cheeks will fill you in on this. This is her beat that um, people just think that there's a majority of these extremists because the media focuses on them. But no, there's not. They're dying out, and we are winning in that regard. 
We are winning in that regard, but there are other ways in what we're losing in this war. We need to pick up the pace, but anyways... <clears throat> um, this is like a corruption in the operating system of a person where she will actually go ahead and concoct this, this situation. In her mind, she will invent it. She will project racism upon a situation because she wants for it to be there. She needs for it to be there because it justifies the way that she's been trained to feel angry and, and resentful and even hateful towards white people at large in general because somebody taught her to believe that white people enslaved her as though she was in any way directly involved with, with racism again. As regards her genetic structure and the passing on of her genes, in some way she was. But again, people change. Slavery's been, I mean, okay, to, to speak to the reality of the situation, slavery didn't go anywhere. It's just that it's not exclusively black people that are being enslaved now. It's all of us. This is because America was originally intended the concept of America was invented, it was constructed to be a work farm. America is designed to be a slave state. But that's another issue in, as regards this issue. Actual systemic racism is a, a value set that's playing in the back of our operating system that's been beaten into us, conditioned into us via unseen indoctrination, just kind of ambient indoctrination in society that teaches black people to be resentful of white people at large in general and to indeed project and create instances of racism where in fact it does not exist. They fool themselves into thinking that people are being racist when they're not. And I've seen this again, that the, the uh, black women's hair getting wet thing is kind of a trope where I've seen it like on the Daily Show where they did this bit where black people said, white people, if you're gonna ask about our hair getting wet, just fucking Google it and like it. Look, white people, I know you have lots of questions. Like, maybe too many questions. Like, how often do you have to wash black hair? What is a silk press? What does a do-rag do? Well, the good news is we're about to fill you in. We're about to give you the answer to all your questions about black hair. You ready for it? You ready for it? You ready for it? Okay, here it is. Google it. Google it. Fucking Google it. Fucking Google it. I mean, it doesn't have to be Google. It can be fucking Bing, YouTube, Wikipedia. I don't give a shit. The information is out there. And once you get the information, you can appreciate all the beauty and hard work it takes to keeping my hair laid and looking good, okay? And if you're not interested in Googling it, there is another option. Fuck off. Leave us the fuck alone. Fucking off. It's always an option. Okay, so again, for the purposes of appropriate education, this white people asking black people questions about their experience because they genuinely would like to better understand it can either Google it or fuck off and leave us the fuck alone sort of attitude. That's called racism. And it's precisely the fucking problem. See, it's systemic in the sense that it's influencing your operating system and you don't even fucking know it. And I should like to note just for the record here that I personally do not have anything against any black people, generally speaking, for being black. I do, however, very much so have something against certain black people for behaving this way. This fucking obnoxious dickhead we're looking at right here is almost identical to the person I mentioned being unable to work with earlier. Lady, if you can present unto me any feasible evidences to the effect of validating you feeling as though you have the right to behave in this holier-than-thou obnoxious, arrogant, talk-down-to-everybody sort of way, I'll take a look at it and consider letting it slide. But I'm going to go ahead and bet that you don't actually have any such thing because it doesn't really exist. And madam, I understand that you're a comedian, but the thing is, you aren't fucking funny. And also, for the office guy, Craig Robinson, I believe is his name, um, dude, your Pizza Hut commercials are really fucking stupid. Like, you need to get out of that contract. You are 
fucking embarrassing everyone. You used to be awesome. You just, you need to back out, please. Anyways, just to briefly recap. Discouraging people from communicating directly and, you know, making friendly, personal connections with each other because of the color of your skin is not merely racist, but a downright objectively shitty fucking thing for you to be doing just, you know, like, as a person. This is to say, presuming that y'all guys out there, blacks and whites alike, still consider yourselves to be human beings deep beneath those special skin colors you love to wear like a damned badge of honor. In a very hostile, hateful manner, because that's the norm. That's, that's how society treats this. As though asking somebody this question is, is, it's off limits, that's taboo. If communicating with each other is taboo, I'm thinking that might, it, it comes across to me as being kind of racist. If it's taboo for white people to be asking black people questions about their, their ethnicity, about their race, about their culture. As though we should even be differentiating, as though we don't share a culture. No. See, it's, it's this division complex in play, tricking people into thinking that we are divided in this way. It's a sort of separatism playing behind the scenes, and in order to reinforce that, it, it pushes for people, black and white. White people are conditioned to a certain extent to fear black people. Just you, even at the slightest level, you know, I grew up in being taught in this way, educated in such a way as to be afraid of black people in general, which paints a certain image upon black people I come across even to this day of them being in some way criminal or, or hostile, of them being a, a, a villainous, a person to be feared because that's, that's drilled into the operating system of my psyche. And it's tough to get rid of it, but all you were, I mean, you may never actually get rid of it, at least not in this lifetime, but what we can do is work to get rid of it by realizing it. By bringing it into the light, by seeing it for what it is, acknowledging it, addressing it openly, and, and communicating this, communicating with each other. No, I don't want to fucking Google it, and I'm not going to. I'm going to ask whatever fucking questions I want to, because that's how you beat this thing. Communication. Open lines of communication and acceptance of each other. There is no actual division. That's not happening. That's not real. This separatism and this, this concept of racism being inherent, that's not real. Where people are speaking nowadays to the CRT, this critical race theory, and how it teaches people to be, to, teaches people to, to adopt racism as an innate trait of their personality. That's not happening. Critical race theory, in actuality, is an attempt to bring this to the surface so that we can see it for what it is and beat it so that when we pass our genes on to the next version of us, they don't have it anymore. So that's what we need to be doing. That's an instance of how this works and, again, an introduction into what we can think of as being advanced racism, which is actually basic racism 101. It's it's the, the, the foundation of the trick that's being played on us. And yes, it's a trick. It's all a fucking trick. It's a psych trick that old white people, slave owners, played on the entirety of society in an attempt to ensure that racism remained, in an attempt to maintain a concept of white supremacy, but we're beating it. We are beating it now by bringing it to the surface, by addressing it openly, and by communicating. So just, I guess, keep this in mind the next time that any sort of a question is addressed in your personal experience and somebody says such a stupid fucking thing and go Google it with a, with a kind of go fuck yourself, you know, attached to it. Um, no. No. I'm asking you as a person because I care about you and your, your seeming to be separate culture personally. Care. And fight for that care. Don't let anybody fucking tell you not to care. Don't let anybody tell you that you should go hide away, 
sit behind a fucking computer screen and Google it because you need to be afraid to ask that question. That's not how this works. We're better than that. I know you're better than that. Anyways, that's about it for this one. Um, keep us alive.